it's Mr. Backberg here. This is lesson 3.3 part 1. We're going to start taking a look at some different properties of logarithms. So first thing we're going to do is use change of base formulas to rewrite and evaluate some logarithmic expressions. And then we're going to use different properties of logarithms to evaluate and rewrite logarithmic expressions. Now evaluating logarithms on your calculator is really easy if we're dealing with either a base 10 logarithm or a base e natural log. But we're gonna run into some logarithms that are of other bases that aren't as easy to do on our calculator. Now if you have a newer calculator, you might have a log base button where it actually lets you change the base of the logarithm that you're working with. But a lot of the older calculators and just kind of general scientific calculators only have the base 10 logarithm and the base e logarithm button. So it's important to understand how these change of base formulas are gonna work in case you don't have that log base button. So if we're looking at log base a of x, we can either rewrite that using a base 10 logarithm where we go base 10 log of that x value divided by base 10 log of whatever that a base was that we were starting with. We could also use that natural log to help us out. It's basically the same thing. It just says natural log of x divided by natural log of a. We also could take this and rewrite it as a general base b logarithm. Depending on what that x value is that we're looking at, it might be helpful to use a different base other than a base 10 or a base e just to get some different properties of logarithms to work out nicely. So here in this first example, we're gonna use common logarithms, which are our base 10 logarithms in order to rewrite some of these logarithms so that it's easier for us to type them into our calculator. So in part A, we're looking at log base four of 25. So using that base 10 change of base property, we'd go just base 10 log of 25 divided by that base 10 log of four. And now we can type this into our calculator if we don't have one of those log base buttons. So we'll go log of 25, close the parentheses, divided by log of four, close the parentheses again, hit enter, and we get 2.322 if we round this off to three decimals. Next example, again, using those base 10 logarithms, we've got log base two of 12. So we'll go log of 12 divided by log of two and type this one into our calculator. Log of 12, close the parentheses, divided by log of two, close them off again, hit enter, and we get 3.585 if we round it off to three decimals. Now it really doesn't matter which change of base formula we use. We can either use those common base 10 logarithms or we can use natural logs to change the base and write these things out. And just to prove that to you guys, I'm gonna do the exact same examples, but this time I'm gonna do natural logs instead. So this one would go ln of 25 over ln of four, and then I'm gonna type this one into the calculator. So this time we're going ln of 25 divided by ln of four, hit enter, and we should notice that the answer is exactly the same as when we did it using base 10 logarithms earlier. On to the next one, we'll go ln of 12 divided by ln of two, and now let's type this one into the calculator. ln of 12 divided by ln of two, hit enter, and we get exactly the same answer we did earlier using base 10 logarithms. Now we're gonna run through some other properties of logarithms, and these properties are gonna hold true no matter what base we're dealing with. So you'll see a base A on here, but just keep in mind that these could be any bases for our logarithms. In this first one, the product property says if we've got log base A of U times V, so we're multiplying a couple of things together inside of those parentheses, we can actually split that up using a little bit of addition. So we can go log base A of the first thing U, plus log base A of the second thing, V. Our quotient property is dealing with division, so if we have log base A of U divided by V, we can split that up using subtraction. So this is log base A of U minus log base A of V. Last property is our power property. So if we have log base A of U raised to some power of N, what we're allowed to do is we can pull that power of n down in front of the logarithm to get n times log base a of u. And like I said, these work for any bases, including natural logs. In these two examples, we are going to rewrite each of these natural logs using natural log of two and natural log of three. So somehow with these numbers that we're dealing with, we need to get twos and threes in there. Now on this first one, when we're looking at the natural log of six, 
Well, if we're trying to get twos and threes in here, we know that if we take two times three, we're gonna get six. Now that we have multiplication going on in here, we can use our product property to split this up using addition. So we'd go natural log of that first thing, two, plus the natural log of that second thing, three, and then we have this rewritten using the natural log of two and the natural log of three, so I think we're done with that one. In this next one, the first thing I see is some division going on. So I'm going to split that up using the quotient property. So natural log of two on top minus natural log of that 27 from bottom. Now we've already got this natural log of two taken care of out in front, but we need to somehow rewrite this 27 using some threes. So we've got natural log of two minus natural log. Well, 27 is three to the third power but now we can use our power property to take this power of three and bring it down in front of that natural log. So then we'd have natural log of two minus three times the natural log of three. Then we've got this thing rewritten using natural log of two and natural log of three. So I think we're done with this one. With this next one, we're gonna be looking at using twos and fives to rewrite these logarithms. So looking at log of 100, well, in order to get to 100, I know that I could take 25 times four, so we could rewrite this as log of 25 plus log of four, but we need twos and fives, so I'm gonna rewrite each one of these. 25 is just five squared, and four is two squared. Then if we use our power property to pull each of those powers down, we've got two log of five plus two log of two, and then I think we're done with that one. With this next one, I'm going to rewrite it using that quotient property right away. So log of five minus log of 64. We can rewrite that 64 as two to the sixth power and use that power property to pull the six down in front. So then we get log of five minus six log of two, and we're done with that one. In these next couple examples, what we're gonna do is try to simplify these down as much as we can so that we can find an exact value for each expression without having to type it into our calculator. So on this first one, we've got log base five of the cube root of five. Remember some properties of exponents. A square root is like a one half power, so a cube root is like a one third power. So we could rewrite this as log base five of five to the one third power. Our power property says that we can bring that one third power down in front, then we've got log base five of five. And if you think about some of those other properties of logarithms we talked about, we said if the number we're taking the logarithm of is the same as the base, well here we've got log base five of five. That answer is automatically one. So if we take one third times one, we just get one third. With this next one, the natural log of e to the sixth power minus the natural log of e squared, I'm gonna bring the power down in front on both of those things. Now remember, a natural log is just a base e logarithm, so this is gonna work a lot like that last one we did. The natural log of e is just one for both of those. So really this is saying six times one, which is six, minus two times one, which is two, so we get four as a final answer. Doing a little bit more rewriting and simplifying, we've got log base two of four squared times three to the fifth, and we're gonna use all those properties to simplify this down. First thing I see going on is multiplication, so I'm gonna use my product property to split this up into an addition problem. So we've got log base two of four squared plus log base two of three to the fifth power. Now I'm gonna bring both of those powers down, so two, log base two of four plus five, log base two of three. Now I can actually rewrite four. We know that four is two squared. So we could rewrite this as two times log base two of two squared plus five log base two of three. And I'm gonna bring this power down as well. And if we take this two power times this other two that we already have out in front, we've got four log base two of two plus five log base two of three. Now with this one, the base and the number we're taking the logarithm of are exactly the same. So log base two of two is just one. Four times one is four plus, I don't think there's any simplifying that we can do with this one. 
we can't reduce this log base two of three on the end, so I'm just gonna leave that as five times log base two of three, and that'll be our final answer on this one. Last example, using our properties to rewrite and simplify. We've got log of nine over 300. Very first thing I see is that we can actually reduce this down. Both of these are divisible by three, so then we end up with log of three over 100. If we split this up using our division property, that quotient property, we get log of three minus log of 100. Now remember, this is a base 10 logarithm. So if we rewrite that 100 as 10 squared, we could bring that power down to get log of three minus two log of 10. This is a base 10 logarithm, so log of 10 is just one. 2 times 1 is 2, so we get log of 3 minus 2 as our final answer. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.